Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Be Perfectly Queer with me, your host, Justine Diaz. Now, I know usually on set you would see my lovely, beautiful, handsome, outgoing co-host, Mr. Randy Davis, but unfortunately, um, Mr. Uh, Davis has to be out doing his job. Uh, his uh, day-to-day, nine-to-five, has taken him away from the set uh, for the uh, next couple of episodes. So you are stuck with me, but I do have to say I have a very special and wonderful guest here to co-host with me and just, you know, chew the cud, talk about some issues. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in between, please welcome to the show my drag sister, Miss Jem Doshe. Hello, it's me. Randy's not here? No. Alrighty. Uh, oh, oh, you only came for Randy. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear that a lot, unfortunately. Um, nobody ever wants to see me. They're always just, well, you know. You know what? We'll try to make good with the B team. It's fine. It's fine. Always, always with the B team, right? Um, so. I am so happy to have you on today because we want to talk about some things that not a lot of people like to talk about, you know, about our industry, um, mm -hmm. about what's going on, um, some things about just drag in general, what it means to us, and how drag kind of affects our life in our day to day. Yes, all the fun, heavy topics. All the fun, <laughs> heavy topics, right? So, for a majority of you out there, you know, who see drag queens, you see drag race, you see all mm -hmm. these wonderful things, you see all the glitz and the glam and all the wonderfulness on stage, you get to see the performance, the art, the storytelling, but there's the back end of everything. There's always the um, the story behind the story. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why a lot of us do what we do, and it's not just performance, correct? Oh, 100% correct. It's performance, it's activism, it's political. Like, we do a little bit of everything and just try to make it, you know, we use our platform to spread a message and have awareness and also have a good time. Exactly, and that's really what it is. Like, <laughs> we're here to have a good time. We're here to make everybody have fun. But we really need to let people be aware of the issues that are kind of, you know, affecting our community on a day-to-day, -day, especially the uh, drag mm -hmm. and trans community. Um, so, first mm -hmm. and foremost, you and I, we do a lot of story reads. Yes. So we go all over uh, um, uh, locally in our Simcoe County uh, mm -hmm. community, and we go to different libraries, and we read stories to families. And we have been doing that for quite a few years now. Yep, I think that was like one of my first few gigs uh, forever ago was doing Drag Queen story time. Yep. Yeah, and so for a majority of people, they understand what it's all about, right? Mm -hmm. But f for that small portion of people, yeah. they believe that what we're doing is a detriment to children especially. Yeah, what we're doing is, you know, disgusting and inappropriate for children. It just creates more questions about, you know, gender and identity and just a lot of p people just want their kids to kind of just like, boy is boy, girl is girl, and never the two shall mix. Exactly, right? There's that, there's always, it's so black and white with a lot of people, mm -hmm. but for those of us who are a part of the 2SLGBTQIA plus community, we, non we understand that, you know, gender and sexuality is a spectrum. Mm -hmm. Identity is a spectrum. Um, and what we're doing is not focused on children, it's focused on families yes. and allowing families to um, mm -hmm. obtain the information that they need to better cater or help their children grow as human beings, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And I think I've said this last time when I was here on your show talking about drag queen story times. I offer like any book that I'm going to read, I will happily post on my Instagram, my Facebook, wherever you want to see it so that parents who don't want to bring their kids to this can take the time to read those stories to their kids so those lessons are still getting out there. Absolutely, and that's the thing too. People don't realize that all of the material that we are given, everything that we have is given to us from the public library system. So everything mm -hmm. that is available um, to or for these story reads is available to anybody to take out for themselves and they can read at home with their children mm -hmm. or on their own. Exactly. As long as parents are like interacting with their kids, I'm happy. That's exactly it. There always needs to be a discussion. And um, like I had said before, it was Trixie Mattel who actually came in and said this. Um, for those of you who don't know who Trixie Mattel is, she's a famous drag queen from RuPaul's Drag Race. Google it. Google. Um, <laughs> anyway, she had made a statement and it has resonated with me for so, so, so long. 
and that is is we are not here to teach your kids to be gay. We're not here to teach uh -huh. your kids how to be trans. What we are here to do is to be that beacon of light, to be that person for those queer children, because we growing up as queer children did not have that available to us. Right, exactly. We didn't have anybody to tell us that you could have a different identity than what people are expecting of you. Right? Instead, we just got told, this is your expectation, this is what you need to do, Exactly. Out. Blue jobs, pink jobs, and that's it, right? Yes. But as we've grown as people, as we've grown as a society, as we've grown as a community, we understand that there is more out there than just the binary, the the, the finite of everything, right? Yeah. Um, in my program that I do, my Drag 101 Queer History program, mm -hmm. um, one of the things I like to talk about is queerness in culture. Um, and that has been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Um, we're talking about um, the, the Mahu people from Hawaii, the uh, Hedra people from India, mm -hmm. uh, the Tatapui, uh, the Fafafini. Like these are all tribes yes. of people who identified as the First Nations people as a two-spirited individual. You know, they were revered mm -hmm. in their culture. They were, you know, looked upon as holy people, as shamans, as, as people you would go to for information. And that all changed due to a little thing that we like to call colonialism, but that's a whole other story. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. Let's go down that road. Uh, that, that that sounds a, like a that's <laughs> a whole other road that we'll get to on another on another talk, but not today. Yeah. But yes, because of that that kind of moment in time, mm -hmm. all of that got lost in culture. And for thousands of years, this was revered by those cultures. And so it's not something that has just popped up out of nowhere. It's not something that is just, you know, oh, look at us, we're here, this is the new fad. Yeah. This is something that has been around forever. And we just are trying to mm -hmm. continue to bring that information, that peace and that love to people. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to anybody out there that doesn't know what's going on or would like to know more about what we do? Just, in all honesty, just ask. I'm always open for a conversation. I go out and I, I will talk to protesters, yes. as you have done before. Yes. I will talk to counter-protesters, non-protesters, I'll just approach people on the street and just talk to me. I'm very open. If you see me in a full face, hair and makeup, Trust me, I'm, I want attention. Yes, <laughs> you can come and talk to me. <laughs> we don't do this just because we want to blend into the crowd. Us, attention, no. Yes, some of no. us don't know how to blend. No, we don't. You say that, but look at your corner crease. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, we both look gorgeous. This is my sister. We are absolutely in love with each other. We go, this is, this is the best part about being a drag queen mm -hmm. too. It's the, it's the fun, the kiki, the behind the scenes. Yeah. So let's talk about the fun part about behind the scenes right now because we talked mm -hmm. a little bit of serious let's talk about the dressing room let's talk about what it's like oh. to be a, a drag queen in the dressing room the dressing room is like the most sacred space you guys are getting a really good look at something that we don't usually talk about mm -hmm. but we're gonna talk about it mm -hmm. it's i don't know there's something about holding like a makeup brush that just makes girls just want to talk and just be more open and just be like Girl, I'm about to tell you something that I'm not going to say anything. This can't leave this room. Did you hear about what this person did to that person? And oh my God, girl! Mm -hmm. The tea is spilled yes. all the time. But it's also really funny mm -hmm. because people think it's like, you know, it's a bunch of catty, you know, girls, girls in the back <laughs> doing their thing, whatever. Uh, and it's not. I have yet to be in a dressing room and I've mm -hmm. shared dressing rooms with many different performers, the, our house, other houses, things like that. And it's always been met with nothing but love and respect oh. and, and mm -hmm. joy and helping each other and yeah. like this camaraderie, the sisterhood that we have, right? Yes, exactly. It's just like, we all know like why we're there, what we're there for. And then from that, we just go, oh, perfect. Like we know what we're gonna say to people. And we're gonna have like little jabs at each other. We're just gonna have fun. Cause I've jokingly said that like there's jokes that you can tell to your friends and there's jokes that you can tell on a stage. We get those jokes we can only tell to our friends mm -hmm. like out in the dressing room. So when we get on stage, we're not saying anything that's gonna get us, you know. Canceled? Turn, yeah, canceled, have the TV turned off. And exactly, just... and that's the thing too. Like, we do have to be very mindful, and it's all about reading a yeah. room. Going back to our previous topic about the story reads, as drag performers, it's like anything in life. There is a spectrum to it. So we know when to dial mm -hmm. it down, and when we're taking care of children and families and the, the type of topics mm -hmm. that we need to talk about and the, the appropriateness. And then we 
go from there to our nightlife job because you know again yeah. we're adults with other adults we are making decisions with other adults so the topics of conversation can be a little bit more risque mm -hmm. our costuming can be a little bit more risque yes but again it's a 19 plus environment that we are in so we have the ability to do that and i think that's one of the mm -hmm. one of the many reasons why i think i love doing what we do is because we get to play so many different characters and wear so many different hats yes yeah lovely little hats lovely little hats right um, <laughs> did a hair flip. Right? <laughs> Woo! Shh, don't want her to lose it on set. Um, that's the other thing, too. Perfection. This is one thing that a lot of people have a misconception about. Myself as well. When I first started doing drag, I thought everything needed to be absolutely perfect, absolutely poised. Everything had to be on point. And then I started working with <laughs> tons of different people. All the bunch of girls from Toronto, some RuPaul's Drag Race queens, and mm -hmm. I realized that I was taking my drag way too seriously, and there needs to be more fun to mm -hmm. it. And don't get me wrong, when you're doing competition, yes. when you're doing pageant, mm -hmm. uh, which my lovely sister has done a pageant, yes. I have not. Um, we will second runner-up, entertainer of the year. Woo! but we will be competing this year together. <laughs> Different competitions, but we will be competing together. Mm -hmm. uh, but those are the areas where you need to, you know, mind your P's and Q's and be on point yes. and everything like that. But when it comes to a day-to-day -day show, like a bar show, it's all your, at the end of the day, you're just gonna get sweaty mm -hmm. and gross and everyone wants to be there and watch you move. So yeah. enjoy it and have fun because it's all about having fun, right? And who would you say is the grossest performer you've worked with and why is it Carmen Del Rey? <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry. Funny story about that, though, and I will say this: I have never, in my entire almost eight years of doing mm -hmm. drag, seen anybody quite like my sister Carmen Del Rey. Our, yeah. our sister Carmen <laughs> Del Rey. We were doing a show a little while ago, and we always get fed when we do restaurant shows. Mm -hmm. And the one time, she came. The waiter came and dropped this thing in front of her, and I was like, what in the god-awful is that smell? Girl. And she turns around, and she's yeah. eating a seafood pasta. Yeah. In drag, in the drag room with shrimp, scallops, uh, mussel. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my god. Like, there are things that you can do yeah. in drag. That is not one of them. I mean, when they say you get a free meal, find what's the most expensive item on the menu. Because right? treat yourself to right? something good. No, I'm the, I'm the easiest person. Get me some chicken fingers and some fries. Something I can like open and like go past the lipstick or not get anything on my clothes. Exactly. Easy peasy. You know what? Find a nice easy meal so that when you go back to the bar and want to have like a date night, you can like be ready for exactly. it. Exactly. And believe you me, some of the places that we've worked in are amazing, 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 amazing. places. The menus are phenomenal. Uh, speaking of which, mm. uh, shows, Grillicious. Yes, Grillicious, right here in the great town of Barrie. We have a monthly show going on there. Um, unfortunately, because May is so hectic and busy, we've had to push our first, this is the first time I think we've ever had to cancel a show for mm -hmm. with them. But it's a brand new contract, so we're happy to do the Pride kickoff party with them June 1st. So let's talk a little bit yes. about what people can expect at a Gem Dose Shape Productions show at Grillicious. Okay, you can expect a little of this. A little of that. <laughs> One of the no. <laughs> no, like you, I just do like my regular shows. I give you comedy. I give you performance. I will single you out on a microphone if you're the only straight boy who decided to show up with his girlfriend. I will pick on you because it's fun for me. It is, and that's mm -hmm. I think another reason why we love doing what we do because we get yes. to be jokers. We get to have fun oh, yeah. with the crowd, and we get to make people feel a little bit uneasy, but at the same time, making them feel more comfortable with themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so where can they go to uh, get information for the show at Grillicious? Honestly, they can go to right to Grillicious's uh, Instagram page or mm -hmm. its Facebook page, at Grillicious Berry. Yep. Or you can follow my Instagram page at Jem Doshay, J-E-M-M-D-O-S-H-A-Y, because you really should. It's a good time. It, yeah, you really <laughs> should. She's, she's a good time. Yeah. She's a good time gal. Um, and I will say too, like I do charge for tickets, but if someone's like, I really want to come, but I can't, I might give a discount here and there. Reach out to Not all the time. will help you out. Yes, trust me. On the day of, if I've got empty tables, I'd rather put somebody in there who's going to tip me nicely. That's what it's all about. And remember, hmm. tipping is not mandatory, but it is appreciated. No, it's not. It's appreciated and mandatory. <laughs> it can be two things. It can be two things. It absolutely can. <laughs> 
Um, all right, so we've talked about shows. Mm -hmm. We've talked about a little bit of like the negativity. We've talked about the fun backstage mm -hmm. stuff. Let's talk about life as mm -hmm. our outside of drag selves that kind of goes with our life <laughs> as our drag selves and how yeah. that kind of balances and or kind of counteracts with each other. Yes. So as, you know, a you know day-to-day -day person, and so just so you know, when we're talking gender here, we both identify as he, him. We are cisgendered males mm -hmm. outside of drag. So when I'm using this term, it is because this is mm -hmm. how I know that we both identify. So as day-to-day -day, as he, him, mm -hmm. um, as Lucas, <laughs> oh, I used the government <laughs> name. Oh, um, how does that day to day get affected by Jem Doshe? Well, I find like when Lucas is Lucas and not Jem, it's just such a different feeling because there's people who don't even know who Lucas is, but they know who Jem is. In and out of drag, they don't know to call me Lucas. It's always Jem, 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 Jem. Mm -hmm. And then I always feel like I have to be the character and be on. And so from that, Lucas kind of gets pushed aside sometimes which is sad because he's a great guy and he's single. <laughs> <laughs> I love both of us at the same Call time. Call me now. <laughs> uh, but so again, how does that affect things like dating? Like when, it, when you're looking mm. to, to you know, pursue somebody romantically, yeah. how does that affect you? I don't tell people when I'm trying to pursue them romantically, I don't tell them I'm a drag queen. Just for the simple reasoning of, I don't want them to fall in love with the character mm -hmm. until they get to know the person. Yes. Once they get to know the person, they can get to know the character and never the two shall meet. Like, I don't want people to date Jem. Jem is forever single. She's never to marry or date or any of that stuff. She's always to be flirtatious and fun. Exactly. But Lucas is desperate and thirsty and just honestly, the number is scrolling along the bottom of the screen, or so I'm told it should be. Please call me now. Yes, the first 15 callers get a free token. Mm -hmm. It's nothing, it's just a hello. Um, anyway, <laughs> to be honest, I totally agree with you there. Like, mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate that I am married. I have been with my husband for 15 years. We've been married for 11 years, thank you. And it hasn't always mm -hmm. been the easiest, mm -hmm. but I'm very fortunate to have that. Yes. And I think one of the best things that ever hit me the hardest was when you and I got to work with Trinity K. Bonet for yes. the, um, the uh, Play State Save the Sigma, Sigma with yes. Randy, yes. And um, when we did our little meet and greet mm. afterwards with her and um, she looked at Matthew, she looked at my husband and said, thank you for loving him mm -hmm. and thank you for doing what you do for mm -hmm. him because a lot of drag queens don't have that. They don't get that. Yeah. Because people, again, with the regular society, have a hard time differentiating the fact that, yes, we're men, but we dress as women to perform, yeah. to make a living, to make money. We don't do this as a day-to-day, -day, but sometimes people have that yeah. hard time differentiating between art mm -hmm. and gender identity. Yeah, and what's really hard, too, is I don't know if someone's wanting to date the character but not the person yes and it's all it's almost like a, a fetishizing yes like the way trans people get like fetishized, i don't want right? to be a bucket list item exactly. i don't want to be like on someone's checklist i don't want to be like a notch like just like oh uh, you know goal complete exactly and that and that's the that's the the be all and end all of it is, is we want to be looked at like mm -hmm. every other person and that's why i feel so hor uh, so it's horrible for you know my trans siblings and our other drag siblings who don't have the significant other in their life because it mm -hmm. becomes very difficult to find that person mm -hmm. right and so i think it's really important to realize the humanity behind all of this right yes. like when we take this off we are ourselves like we get to be our mm -hmm. our, our our true identity um and then other people who are living their true authentic selves and living their day-to-day -day life are being chastised and being looked down upon for just being the person that they are in their own skin. So mm -hmm. where does that line kind of get drawn? Where do we kind of like say enough is enough and like how do we move forward from this? Right, like it's just, you just, blah, blah, blah. You just have to try your best to kind of like get through and just hope that the person you're with is there for genuine reasons. Yeah. Be they friend, family or whatever, hopefully they're there to get to know you and not just, you know, you know, they don't want to just know Justine. They want to know 
boy name. Exactly. You can say Mitchell. Everyone knows I was, what my uh, name is. I wasn't going to because that's improper. Don't ever do that to us in public. Yes, yes, yeah. that is one thing. Don't ever use our government names Thanks. when we're yeah. in drag. <laughs> it's it's that's a that's a, a no no. Yeah. We we use our personas as a way to project yeah. um, this ability to be ourselves and mm -hmm. uh, and this character. So when you kind of bring us back down to reality, it's because like this is for us this is yeah. like our superhero costume, right? <laughs> Like yeah. we get to put this on, we get to be somebody that we're not for a little mm -hmm. while. We get to pretend and and just bring a little bit of light to people. But sometimes when you get that, hey Mitchell, and it's like, oh, oh yeah, oh, oh, you brought me back down to reality, and I didn't like that. Yeah, because there's people who knew Lucas before they met Jem, and yep. so every time I would show up as Jem, I'm like, oh Lucas, can you? Do I'm like Lucas is not here, honey. It's Jem mm -hmm, tonight. Mm -hmm, gem, gem, mm -hmm. gem, 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 gem. And just to touch back on what you had said earlier, it doesn't mm. matter whether it's a, a person romantically or or just somebody in your life, like a friend or, or a family member, mm -hmm. who just doesn't understand what's going on or why we do what we do. They just they just think it's, we want to be women. We want to dress up and look silly and, and yeah. do all this. But like, what do you, what do you have to say to that when you have uh, to other performers who have family members that don't kind of agree with what they're doing? Yeah. Like, I think I've told this story on stage before that I had a family member who I said, hey, how much time would I have to give you to get you to come out to one of my shows? And they basically just said, hey, listen, drag shows aren't really my thing. I don't go to the opera. I don't go to the ballet. I also just don't go to drag shows. It's not my thing. Mm -hmm. To which, of course, I said, well, your brother, ooh, let that slide. Sibling. Your sibling um, isn't a ballet dancer, isn't an opera singer. They are a drag queen. It'd be nice for you to come out and support. And sometimes people just won't support that, but that's it's something you just have to deal with. If mm -hmm. you can still love someone who doesn't support you, mm -hmm. if you can still stand on your own two feet and be like that beacon of light that you know that you are and be that fun and that joy. And as long as you're making other people happy and you're not hurting anybody, I don't see why there's any harm. But at the same time, you want to be loved by the people who should love you. Exactly, exactly. But like you said too, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what these people's opinions are. Mm -hmm. As much as we want it, as much as we want that validation, at the end of the day, you need to love you and we need to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of us also do drag is because we need to fall in love with ourselves and be that little bit extra yeah. to kind of really help our our day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. be a little bit better. Yeah, and I think that too, there's also the perspective that now as Jem, I can look at Lucas and go, what makes Lucas great? What makes Lucas fantastic? And how can I put a little bit of Gem into Lucas? And I'm gonna put a little bit of Lucas into Gem. Exactly. So that both can be more harmonious and exist. And you know, the only difference is just a little bit of lipstick. That's exactly it, right? And mm -hmm. like you said, when we get together, like when us sisters get together, mm -hmm. it's always girl, it's always Gem, it's always you know Justine, regardless yeah. of whether in and we're in and out of drag. Right. But that's just how we are together it helps us really just find that sense of comfortability, I think, too, in mm -hmm. our day-to-day -day lives. Because I know myself personally, I suffer with anxiety and, you know, like depressive thoughts and like constantly worrying about what people think about me. And it's taken me a long time to kind of, you know, get over that. And Justine's really helped me in that way. And I hope, like with mm -hmm. Jem, she's kind of done that in Lucas's life yes. for you. Yeah, of course. It's helping me kind of like have an alternative perspective on something else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's kind of hard to quantify and explain, but yeah. it's just like an extra set of eyes and, you know, someone else from an inside looking in. <laughs> well, that's exactly it. Now, I don't know about you, but for me personally, like when I walk into my drag room mm. and I see Justine sitting there and it's been a while since I've been in drag, I actually miss her. Like, I, I, I feel bad, and I go in and I talk to her. Yeah. I'm like, hey, girl, like, I miss you. <laughs> I know it's been yeah. a minute. Like, I'll see you soon kind of thing. Do you ever have those feelings or emotions with your drag? See, part of me just wants to be a comedian and just go, no. <laughs> but no, yeah, sometimes there's moments where I'm like, I really miss Jem. I wonder what she's up to. Like, what, what happens to Jem when Jem's not around? Like, right? what is she up to? What is she doing? Right. And it's just, you know, I do miss her sometimes. I know that there's people out there, too, who miss her as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like to be jam. I like to just go out and have the fun. Right, and we also love, don't get me wrong, like this girl can friggin' perform the house down, mm -hmm. but you want comedy. You want friggin' direction. You want somebody to run a mm -hmm. seamless show for you. This is the individual to do it for yes, you. Yes, that is correct. I do comedy, I do Broadway, I do camp, timeline, screenshot, nope, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> 
again, see? I couldn't help myself, yes. sorry. <laughs> uh, but no, I honestly, I never have any issue when I know that you're in charge of running a show. Mm -hmm. um, you always make sure that everybody's taken care of, everybody's treated equally, the show runs smoothly. If there's any issues, you they always get evened out right beforehand, so that's great. And even though I know that you're stressing out and freaking out on the inside, <laughs> you, sound, you most of the time don't let it show on the outside, which is great. Yeah. So that's true professionalism. Yeah, no, I always find my moments to kind of like take my breaths and go, okay, I have to be professional right now. I yeah. can't be the stress monster. I have to just be like, hey, we have to kind of move things around for this reason or that reason and just kind of keep the show moving along. That's exactly it. And you kind of, when it comes to shows, it's it's kind of just like sh like a, a shoot from the hip kind of thing. Like, yeah, th things happen, stuff happens, lights go out. Uh, mm -hmm table legs break, uh, you know, somebody doesn't show up. Yeah. There's always something that happens. It's just knowing how to manage it in a professional manner, and you always do that. Yes. So thank you, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I think I know that every person that works your shows really appreciates that. Yeah. Um, just some other things to like talk about too before we start wrapping up. Um, what can people expect to see from Jem Doshe and her productions in the next little while? Oh gosh, I hope it's just they see the community that I'm trying to create here. Barry doesn't have this huge drag scene like Toronto does or like Halifax does or like those big cities and I want to really keep working on changing that. So if you don't want to come to a Gem Dossier show, go to a Troy Boy show, go to a House of Dream show. Mm -hmm. House of Cards is uh, a smaller group that's starting up that are yes. also very fantastic. Amazing group And they of have kings. Yes. Go see a drag king. Oh my goodness. If you haven't seen the House of Cards yet, if you mm -hmm. haven't got to see any of the kings performing or any of the gender performers, uh, uh, Jacqueline of all trades is a gender performer. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love her. Um, lots of performers here in our local community. Yes. And a lot of people who are starting up, like uh, Naomi Bars is yes, coming up with us. Yes, and she's sweet, fantastic. Miss sweet Naomi, Naomi Bars, Bars, yeah. Yes. And like I had said to you before, <laughs> like our community is a big community. We're spread out, but we're mm -hmm. very small and very close knit. Mm -hmm. So when you are in the community, when you're out there working, what's some advice for people who are just coming in to drag? What is some advice you have to give to them? Okay, the, the two greatest pieces of advice I'm ever gonna give you. One tip. All right, and two, have fun. We're there to have fun with you. If you're there to just sit in the back corner and just scowl, point, and you know, just make a mockery of everything, leave. Come, have fun, laugh with us. If we're laughing at you, you're laughing at us, then it's so much more fun. Yes, we need that, because mm -hmm. again, we're like Tinkerbells. If you don't clap, if you've never been to a show before, we want high energy, we want clapping, we want cheering, we want you to mm -hmm. have fun, because that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. Well, we've come to the end of our segment, Miss Doshe. Oh. Thank you so, so, so much for having uh, for having me, for being here <laughs> on my show. Wow, this is my show. Thank you so much for having me on my show. Yep. Um, thank you so much for being here on the show. Um, I'm going to have you back again uh, on another episode uh, later on, mm -hmm. and we're going to discuss some other heavier topics about things. Yep. Um, again, thank you so much for watching us. Um, if you have not been watching us, you can find us here on Rogers and or on YouTube. Again, my name is Justine Diaz. I am your host for the show. Uh, we have, again, Mr. Randy Davis, who unfortunately isn't here. We miss you, Randy. Love you. And uh, for those of you out there, stay safe, love each other, and see you soon. Bye for now. And of course, the theme song, it goes like this. It's Let's Be Perfectly Queer.